today's Cajun court. I love children, and for me to see her struggling with her kids, I could relate to her. But what makes you think I was struggling? I've been on food stamps before. So now I'm on food stamps? Yeah. Probably well, so. Did she tell you she was on food stamps? No, ma'am, but I, I can tell she probably is on food stamps. Probably. Am I lying? Oh, you're such a church person, I can tell. All right. The Honorable Jacqueline A. Scott preside. Cage the court is now in session. Don't make me drop my hammer. He's the drunk. He did pay. Just a minute. If brains was dynamite, you could even blow your nose. <laughs> <laughs> when the bull is up to your ears, keep your mouth shut. I ain't going back to jail. Cause this is a railroad job. She probably slashed my tires with her this teeth. This isn't art, this is velvet p An eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. Take it from me, you can overcome anything. Please change your life. Get him, Rod. Oh. We'll get along just fine when you realize I am the boss. The plaintiff is suing the defendant for going against their co-sign contract agreement. The plaintiff claims she felt obligated to help a single parent with two kids to obtain a vehicle. The defendant rejected the offer repeatedly. However, the plaintiff persisted. The plaintiff assures she was guided by the Holy Spirit to make this decision. However, she is now having second thoughts. Stick around to see what happens on today's Cajun Court TV. Cajun Court is now in session. The Honorable Jacqueline A. Scott is presiding. All of the litigants have been sworn in. This is case number 910, co-signer gone bad. Okay, let's get started. This is a situation involving a co-signer. Plaintiff, you brought this case as a good Samaritan. I understand you co-signed for the defendant a car. Indeed. Wanna... Okay, I'll start with you. Yes, ma'am. So a couple of months ago, I saw the defendant at the store. She was getting in and out of a taxi. So in my heart, I felt like the Holy Ghost was leading me to go speak to her. So once I went to go speak to her, she had the audacity to say, well, um, I'm going through, you know, a little hard times right now. So in my head, I'm like, well, I understand. I used to be a single mother of two myself. So I was like, well, why not help her? So I'm not going to lie, Your Honor. When I saw her getting out the taxi, it was about six or seven times. So I waited on her because I did want to approach her in the right, direct way. So after I got done talking to her, that's when she let me know that her boyfriend had recently left her and he took the Chevy Impala that they used to have together. And by them being both signed to that particular car, all the banks denied her going to get another car. Okay. So now we're here because she owed me $1,500 and I need my money back. Tell me about seeing her in this taxi. Where were you? Okay, we was at Super One. Mm. And in the parking lot of Super One, I said, um, I just love church. Church was amazing. My pastor had preached an awesome word. So I said, well, I'm a little hungry. Let me go and stop and get me something to eat. So I went to Super One to give me some fried chicken because I want to cook fried chicken that particular <laughs> night. I heard they so, had some pretty good chicken. Yes, ma'am. So I went to Super One to give me a pack of chicken or whatever, and that's when I saw the defendant coming out to Texas. She had four kids. Now, I don't know what the other two at the day because she only got two of them. Well, let me ask you something. Yes, ma'am. Now, you said earlier you said six or seven times you are seeing this woman get in and out of Texas. So yes, ma'am. you've seen her before. Yes, ma'am, I have. I'm not that far from Super One. So it don't take me that long to get here. And times I have came, I have saw the defendant because she's a regular customer at Super One. So and I so just, are you as well. You like the fried <laughs> chicken. <laughs> yes, okay. ma'am, okay. I am too. Okay. So you decide you've been to church and you got that religion on and <laughs> and uh, you thought she may need some help. Yes, ma'am. And so you decided to help her get a car. That was just... Yes, ma'am. When I was at the store, me and her talked because she had, at the time, she perceived to have a wonderful spirit. I just looked at it as a single mom. I used to walk back and forth to the store. At least she had a taxi. During my time, I couldn't even afford a taxi. So I felt for her. So that's why 
I reached out to her. When I approached her, that's when she began to tell me the story about her boyfriend. And after she told me that, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's selfish. You have four children at the time. She had four children. Why would he leave you in the car like that? Like, why would he let you ride the ta in yeah, the taxi yeah. and he yeah. got the car? So yeah, it didn't make it sense happens. to me. Yeah. Yes, so yes. as she was talking, my pastor had already preached on giving a helping hand to the needy. So when she was talking, this I'm like, this is what my pastor was talking about today. God, are you testing my faith? So that's why I stopped the helper. So you decided to be a good Samaritan. Yes, ma'am. Okay, didn't know anything about her. Didn't know anything. I know it sounds crazy. Didn't know her from uh, Adam and Eve, you know, no, apples or oranges, and you just decided to help. They say it don't make sense, but it make miracles. So that's the moment I was living in, so I just okay. tried to help her. I tell you what, we're going to take a break. Okay. And come back, and I'm going to hear from the defendant. Yes, ma'am. We're back in session, and before I get to the defendant, I want to know from you, are you requesting her to give you the car, or are you requesting funds from her? What are you asking for? No, ma'am. I prefer that she can give me the car back because she's not responsible enough to even pay on the car. I understand we all go. I understand you have four children. You could have called I me. I didn't want to even my kids, so. Okay. I'm going to come to you in just a moment. Now, you signed, you co-signed for her car. Yes, ma'am. Do you have that agreement? Yes, ma'am. I have it right here. And now it's your turn. Stand up straight. You're not at home. Oh, good girls. I want to hear your side of the story. Well, like she said, she approached me at the store and I mean, yeah, it was weird that she was asking me all these questions, but like she said, she had just came from church, so she looked presentable. She wasn't acting the way she acting today. Oh, excuse me. I mean, I didn't ask for help. I declined a couple of times. She just kept assisting, and she said it would, like, help her and make her feel good, too. So I went along with it. And why did you go along with it? I mean, I guess I was thinking it was going to help both of us in the long run. So now you have a car. And why do you think she won't take this car from you? Well, I mean, when you get late one time, they send a repossession letter out. I mean, so. And why were you late? Because I had a couple of clients um, cancel on me. Do so you everything was going, going on. That's what she told me. OK. OK, she had, you had your opportunity. I want to hear from her, and I, I'll come back to you, OK? Go ahead. But yeah, um, due to everything going on, I had to change my policies. You know, if you feel sick, stay home, quarantine for 14 days. So I had a couple. Can't saw me in the same week. Uh, so uh, I believe in your pleading, you said that was at the beginning of COVID, so everybody's a little afraid, so yeah. you didn't have many customers. Right. Okay. So did you catch up on the payment? Yes, ma'am. I actually called the bank, and I made a payment and a payment arrangement. Oh, you made, so you did your due diligence with the bank, so they accepted your payment. How much is it? Um, I have paperwork right here. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. By the way, I, I love your, your hair, oh, I love the you. braids. And yours too, darling. Thank you. It's actually $750 per month. Yes, ma'am. OK. So did you ask your boyfriend to, to keep the car because you have kids? Obviously not, because we're here today. I mean, I don't see what none of that has well, to do with this. Well, thank you for this. your interjection, but you know, I'm asking the defendant here. You made arrangements to pay the note. Why didn't you communicate that to the plaintiff here? I mean, you see her today. Mm -hmm. There ain't no talking to her. Okay. Must so have, have y'all had any yeah. com communication in between? Her phone off. I can't get in touch with her. Oh. Her phone is not off. Her phone is off. I tried to call her. Oh, you her. think it's off? You I tried to block. call her. After they sent me the letter in the mail saying they was going to repossess the car, I tried to contact her, but her phone, it wasn't even ringing. It said this number has been disconnected, so I'm trying to see what's going on and why I can't get in touch with her. So you got concerned. I got concerned because I'm like, now you finna mess up my credit. And that's one thing I don't play about. A lot of people don't know credit is one thing that actually help you move to that next level. People think it's money, but it's exactly. your credit. Exactly. So it, it, you, now you playing with my money and my credit, and I ain't mm -hmm. got time for it. Mm -hmm. So yes, I did it out the kindness of my mm -hmm. heart, but I felt like she should have still reached out and said, hey, I need a little help with the mm -hmm. money. That's, that's true. Yeah, the Bible says, oh, no man. It does talk so about you, that. you do want good credit. So what do you have to say about that, ma'am? I mean, like I said, you see, it was my turn to talk. She keep cutting me off. She, okay. I tell you she what. She don't let you get no words in. So we're why would I talk to her? We're gonna take a deep breath. We're gonna breathe. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna take a break 
and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back in session, and I want to address some questions to the defendant here. If she'll let me speak. She's going to let you speak. It's your floor. I ain't going to say that. Cool it. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I want to know why you feel compelled or feel like you can speak with this plaintiff here and tell her all about your personal business. She was questioning me like she was just adamant, like she just kept on and on. But you mentioned earlier that you didn't ask her for nothing. No, I didn't. Why didn't you invite her to church? Your Honor, I didn't feel at that particular time, I just felt in my spirit to lead her towards getting another car. It didn't cross my mind at the time to even offer her to it come didn't to church. It cross your mind to offer her to the no, service of the I Lord. know that probably, that probably sound bad, but I didn't. I just felt okay. more, more led to help her with the car. I go to church every Sunday, but believe me, I don't co-sign for people. And I look at it as if, if you co-sign or you give a loan, might as well say, that's a gift. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So what made you think that you would not have a problem with her and you didn't even know her? I guess I was just caught up in a moment. Okay, caught up in that, you know, I was caught up in a moment because I saw her kids. I love children. And for me to see her struggling with her kids, I could relate to her. But what made you think I was struggling? I've been on food stamps before. So now I'm on food stamps? Yeah, probably well, how, so. Did she tell you she was on food stamps? No, ma'am, but I, I can tell she probably is on food stamps. Probably. Am I lying? Oh, you're such a church person, I can tell. Have you done this before? Have you loaned anyone money before? Yes, ma'am, I do it all the time. It's called being a blessing to others or having a spirit of giving. So I do it all oh, the, the time. Oh, the spirit just told my, you to Money with a car? What's the value of the car? You took the Kia Sorento home, yeah, you right should here. know. I didn't even uh, want the Kia Sorento. That's what y'all wanted a Kia to get. And, $7,500. Was there any conversation about what a co-signer means? Did you understand what you were doing when you co-signed for the loan? Yes, ma'am. At the time, I thought she would be responsible enough to be able to take. But that don't mean you could take the car. A co-signer can't just take the car. Excuse me. Will you let her finish and I'll come back to you? Like I was saying before I was interrupted, during that time, you know, we talked to the car salesman and he explained to me about, you know, you know, you co-signing for her. You really don't know her like that. Do you trust that she will make the payments on time? And I was like, yeah, sure. She faithful enough to be a super one all the time. Then she'll be faithful enough to pay this bill. Then why so, you ain't let me get the car I wanted to get? Oh. They don't have nothing to do with me there. That had something to do okay. with both of y'all, you and the salesman. Uh, if you didn't want it, why didn't you say, hey, look, I appreciate the offer, but this is not the car I want. But ma'am, you can't just arbitrarily go and take that car from this woman. I'm not trying to take it from her. That's what you said at the I beginning. I just want to keep, I want to keep my credit at a certain rate. I had already went down so many points because the car salesman going to tell you, it ain't going to mess your credit up, but it did. It went down extremely low. For and one payment that she missed? Right. Okay. Just by going to get the car, it went low. So that's Hell. what I'm saying. I look Me at making it, these payments with you, what I'm going to do, just, build your credit. Just hold up, hold up one moment. So ma'am, did you get a copy of the repossession letter? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Once you got that letter, did you communicate with the plaintiff? Um, the I was going to, um, but like I said, I called the bank and I made the arrangement, but whenever she called, I was with the client and she left a very nasty um, voicemail, so. This lady right here? Yes, this lady right here. Okay. How did I leave a voicemail if her phone was off? How'd you call me if Good my phone question. was off? And one of the things, you know, even Christians can get upset. I, I see nothing wrong with that. It is an issue with her being a good Samaritan and wanting to help you. So that's understandable. I mean, I could understand that, um, but she didn't have to come in hot like that. Okay. Well, we the Bible says be first. angry, but seeing not. The Bible says that. You're there. He says that. So I have the right to be angry. It becomes a sin when I'm sinning against the word of God. We're not in church, but you know, that's good. So if you do the right thing, you're always in a position where you feel good about yourself. And ma'am, I know you felt good when you tried to help me. Yes, ma'am. So what you all have done, you still, it's still time. I know she said your phone is off, or I don't know if you changed your number, but this lady helped you 
and in turn, you are, you're not riding a taxi. Now. So it was a good thing that she did for you. Yeah, and I appreciate it, but like I said, you were saying communicate, she's hollering. That's not communication, and I ain't got drama in my life but her. And so, yeah. yeah. Well, it seems like you already had some drama, drama in your life because you left uh, without transportation with some kids. Okay, but so that don't you mean you know about drama. drama. You know about drama. It means drama. we exactly. separated. Exactly. That so was mutual. We can agree to communicate, but ma'am, you just can't take the car from her. I understand. And if you go back over your agreement, I saw it. That's, that's not the right course. There's a process when someone repossesses a vehicle, okay? But what I'm going to order her to do, ma'am, each month, I want you to pay the obligation that you agreed to. You didn't ask her for it, for the car, but you signed the paperwork where you accepted what she'd offer, okay? Pay your debt. And I did. And, and, and give her a number where she can call you. And you have small children. Maybe she can help you with the children. She's, she's here. Look, she quotes some scriptures, so I know she knows what the Bible says. And she wants to do the right thing. And ma'am, maybe you might want to invite her to church. And you might want to attend. I'm going to end this case right now. I've had enough. And what we're going to do, I'm not going to render a judgment to you, uh, plaintiff. Now I understand your frustration. We're going to move on. We're going to, I'm going to order that you do pay your note each month. And I hope that you all can come together, continue to be a good Samaritan, but be careful. Yes, and I apologize to the defendant if I made it look like as a Christian, I was just upset because she owed me $1,500. And if she was in my shoes, I would want her to look at it the same way. Understood. This session is in for today. Thank you all. And ma'am, take care of those beautiful babies. Yes, ma'am. Well, the doors of the church may be open, but this case is closed. Now, plaintiff, you came in today hoping to get a judgment in favor for $1,500. So how do you feel about the ruling today? At the end of the day, I can't find it unfair because she still has those kids that she have to take care of. So but I'm trying to see how I owe her money when I made my payment. Well, you need to talk to the bank because they don't want to me the letter about repossessing a car. Yeah, the letter is postdated, you know what I'm saying? They've already been sent out. All right, well, looks like we're done here. So stay tuned for more episodes of Cajun Court TV. of me.